and welcome to the scope of science. This is a lichen. Lichens like to live mostly in moist environments, or in deserts, or the vacuum of space, wherever. They are lichens, and they are spunky things. They aren't strictly plants or fungi. This lichen creature is not an individual, but a multitude, with two species working together. Typically, a fungus is the body, and inside of its cells lives an algae. It's a mutual relationship. It's all good. The fungi provides nutrients and shelter to the algae, and the algae photosynthesizes and provides energy to the fungi. Alien, right? Well, wait until we tell you about your strange human cells. But first, a word. The word is endosymbiosis. It's a fancy rat bag of Latin and Greek. Endo meaning inside of, sim meaning together with, and bio meaning life, biology. Endosymbiosis is thus a condition where one living thing lives within the cells or the body of another living thing. Endosymbiosis. Research suggests that about two billion years ago, billion with a B, that one simple, single-celled, microscopic organism engulfed another simple, free-floating, cellular organism. But no, they didn't get eaten. They just started living together, sort of like this liking creature. These cells evolved together and began to act almost as if they were one organism. This is humanity's best theory for how mitochondria evolved. But what are mitochondria? They are the parts within your cells that power your bodies. <gasps> Respiration. They were originally classified as bioblasts, which is officially a much cooler name than is mitochondria. But sometimes biologists cock up and name things in boring ways. Bioblast. Anyway, evidence supports the idea that mitochondria are in fact descended from bacteria. They have their own DNA and circular genomes, like in bacteria. They are encased in a double membrane, like bacteria are, and they reproduce, like bacteria. This theory that there are ancient bacteria keeping all of your cells ticking wasn't <clears throat> very well received at first. Can't imagine why. And now for the retro future forecast. Over to you, Captain. Welcome to the year 1890. A Russian scientist is considering that parts of cells might be descended from bacteria, a theory that seems too shocking for most scientists to even entertain. So they don't entertain it. We fast forward to the 1960s and we see Lynn Margulis trying to publish a paper on the origin of mitosin cells. Were she not the persevering rebel that she was, she may not have championed endosymbiotic theory and her paper may have remained an unpublished quandary. Instead, she gets rejected 15 times by prestigious academic journals, but she keeps fighting for scientific truth. It is 1967 and academics finally accept her paper. As the years pass, this paper changes the academic landscape and this theory is now broadly accepted as truth. You go Lynn Margulis! Most of life as you know it is the combination of many species living and evolving within one another's cells. Is. It's Russian babushka dolls all the way down. Think about it. Plastids, the things that eat sunlight and use that energy to help plants grow? You've probably heard of the poster boy, chloroplast. Well, they are also a form of endosymbiosis. In a very real and profound sense, life on Earth didn't evolve as a simple branching tree, but as a tangled bush with branches weaving away from and back upon one another. We won't tell you what to think about the fact that an ancient species is living in your cells and keeping you alive. Maybe you think it is a beautiful metaphor for the interconnectedness of Earth life. Or maybe you think it is terrifying. Or maybe you think it's no big deal. In which case you clearly need to rewatch this video. You grok.
We would also like to remind you that as a humanoid of the internet, you can like this video and subscribe to the Scope of Science, if you like, where we will be beaming down gateway drugs to science. Thanks for watching.